Hey guys, I just got back from Australia and here's my recap video for the EWS Tasmania. The video starts right after my first race in New Zealand. I'm packing up and heading down to Queenstown to check out the riding on the South Island for the week in between the races. Then I hopped on a plane and headed north to Tasmania, Australia to race the second round of the Enduro World Series. So check it out. So my race was yesterday. All my gear was soaking wet and super muddy after the race. So washed it all really good this morning. And now it is scattered across my hotel room. It is uncomfortable in here, but the heat is on full blast because I'm trying to get it to dry out just a little bit before I get on my plane to Queenstown first thing tomorrow morning. So yeah. And then I hopped on a plane to the South Island to check out the riding in Queenstown. And here I am in beautiful Queenstown. Queenstown, New Zealand was just unreal. It's this super cool resort town right on the edge of a beautiful lake. The town itself has a really fun vibe and the trails surrounding it are just super sick. The first day I pedaled over to the 7 Mile Bike Park, about a half hour pedal north of town, and really fun flowy cross country riding with just really great views. Good way to start out the trip. Of course, I also rode the gondola to check out the bike park, and I did about a thousand laps this week. It was such a fun, super steep, wild bike park. Uh, couldn't get enough. I also shuttled Coronet Peak just outside of towns with Vertigo Bikes. Uh, you can see my last video for some footage from that ride. And all in all, the scenery and the riding was just... Queenstown really blew me away. This was my last ascent back into town. A little bit bittersweet before hopping on a plane to head to my next race. back at the airport for a long day plane hopping to make it to Tasmania. So it's pretty exciting. We just landed at the edge of the earth in Tasmania, Australia. Uh, it's been a really tiring day lugging around a ton of luggage on my own. I finally met up with my teammates and I'm watching the bikes while they go pick up our rental car. First sight of the Tasmanian countryside, it really felt like going back in time. It's a really unique place discussing all the various things that can kill you in the Tasmanian bush, so that is, that's good news. After about an hour in the car, we made it to our little rental house in Derby. And now, it's time to go put the bike back together. By now, this was like the fifth or sixth time that I disassembled or reassembled my bike since leaving the States. So you definitely get really familiar with the process of putting it back together and taking it apart every time you show up somewhere or leave. So we got all three bikes built now and we're ready to go for our first ride in Tasmania. Once we got into town, we decided to do a little pedal to stretch out our legs and to get our first taste of the famous Blue Derby mountain bike trails. We weren't able to ride any of the course until practice, but we did a really fun single track loop through thick jungle, beautiful trail, um, a lot of rock slabs, definitely a lot of love and thought went into these trails. So after our ride, we were really excited to check out the course. After our ride, we decided to do a track walk up stage six. Dry track walking for the okay. uh, <laughs> track walk! <laughs> right away we were really excited. The trail looked really well built, gnarly, steep, and rocky. Definitely looked like something that would be fun to race. This is a wide open slab rock section. There's a giant painted trout on the side of this trail. Huge. <laughs> and on our way back down the trail, they were installing an actual smoking cigarette. Uh, the locals are definitely getting excited for the race. What's this, what's this called? The smoking trout. Smoking trout. <laughs> and here she is in all her glory. We got our van stuck in the sand, so Maggie and I were trying to wait down the back tires before Ed tried to kill us and throw us out the back. Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> we're up. Six, three. <laughs> and for the next couple days, we hung out, rode bikes, hung around the house and just had a good time waiting for practice. You're not allowed to ride on the course until practice, but you are allowed to hike the stages. So we set out for a full day of track walking. What are we doing, Joe? Walking, trying to find a track. <laughs> Follow me later. 
This course was super unique. It was obvious that the trail builders put in a lot of work. Uh, there were these really cool big rock features and these narrow rock slabs that we had to ride through. Uh, it was really cool to kind of take it all in on the track walk before practice. Well, we just uh, hiked stage five and it's pretty gnarly. It's gonna be uh, interesting to practice tomorrow. All right, what do we got coming up here? One tasty, tasty rock garden. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what do we think of the track walk? It's hardcore. My calves are done. I'll be done for racing now. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna rest up. <laughs> The track walk was really exhausting. I'm not used to hiking and we were out there for probably four hours up and down the trails, so my legs were feeling it when we got back to the house to get ready for practice the next morning. Practice was super fun. We had great weather and everyone was just having a really good time messing around and checking out the really awesome, well-built trails. The calm before the storm. We had great weather that day, but we knew it wasn't going to last, and thunderclouds started rolling in the evening before the race. I was focused on surviving and not filming that day, so I figured I'd show you some much better footage from the EWS itself of how the day went. Check out their Facebook for an even longer video. As I'm sure you can see, it was pouring rain and super muddy all day. The mud made it a real challenge to stay on your bike. And conditions were just crazy rough on the bikes. Seven's real short, you're not going to win the race, but certainly lose it there. <laughs> One race was one of the hardest days I've ever had on a bicycle. It was pouring so hard at some points you could barely see the trail in front of you, but the beginning of the day was going good. I was riding well in the mud, I was taking what I learned from Rotorua, but a big over the bars crash on stage four took out my dropper post, my shifting, and my rear brake. It wasn't looking good, I didn't know if I was going to be able to finish, but I was really determined. I zip tied everything back together, and after seven hours in the rain and cold with everybody, I was so excited to cross the finish line and uh, be able to finish this race. The race was yesterday and it was another super cold, really wet, muddy race. Um, we're all really tired, but again, we're packing up everything as you can see behind me. Getting ready to go to the airport in the morning, trying to dry off all of our gear and get all the mud off. So, all the gear drying. This whole trip was really heavy on the mud and washing and trying to dry gear. We broke not one, but two washer machines on this trip. What are you doing, Ed? Oh. <laughs> Is this uh, washer number two that we've broken on this trip? <laughs> Relaxing after the race and we've made it to the beautiful beach. It's <laughs> <laughs> It's going out fast. Uh -oh. oh, this guy? <laughs> I, th I thought it was a crab when you said sea spider. Uh, there's spiders everywhere in Australia. <laughs> uh, it was a nice have this weather during our race yesterday. We'll take it today. And there you have it. This trip was one hell of a way to start off the 2017 race season. Both races were brutal conditions, but I got a lot of good riding in. I learned a lot, had a lot of fun. It was really great to see New Zealand and Australia, and now I'm back here in the States ready for the rest of my season. Uh, sea outers tomorrow, so I'll see you guys there.